Avatar The Last Airbender. It would not be an understatement to say that it is one of the most influential American cartoons of all time, because it launched an era of story-driven animation in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Created by Brian Konitsko and Michael DiMartino and airing from 2005 to 2008, Avatar The Last Airbender holds a particular place in my heart as my favorite show of all time. I just recently finished watching it again, and with a live-action series coming to Netflix soon, I had a strong hankering to make a video based on the world Avatar created. If you haven't watched the show, there will be some spoilers in this video, so go watch the show on Netflix now. It's an incredible show and is only three seasons long, but manages to weave a very well-told story and finish it off in that time. Alright, enough dawdling, let's move into the video. We all know that Ozai, father to Zuko and Azula, is the Fire Lord of the Fire Nation up until the very end of the series. However, if you watch the show carefully, you'll also know that he wasn't supposed to be. Fire Lord Azulon, the Fire Lord before Ozai, had two sons that we know of, Ozai of course, and Iroh. General Iroh was the eldest son of Azulon, and was next in line to take the throne upon his father's death. However, Iroh's son, Luten, died in a battle as the Fire Nation attempted to take Ba Sing Se. Iroh lost his composure and admitted defeat at the walls of Ba Sing Se. Now, something interesting to note here is that it is possible that there was a battle that was lost regardless, and Lu Ten's death was just an additional weight on Iroh. But Azula's comments, while generally unreliable, say otherwise. She noted that Iroh left only because of Lu Ten's death and that they would have won otherwise. And because that's the only information we have to go off of, we'll have to run with that. Considering the extreme emotional weight his son's death seemed to carry, as shown in the heart-wrenching episode, The Tales of Ba Sing Se, it's not unlikely Azula is right to some degree. It may not have been a point of weakness, however, and more so Iroh finally seeing the futility and destruction of war. Although it's never said directly, it can also be inferred that Iroh stepped down from being a general not long after. Anyways, so Lu Ten died and Iroh declared defeat. Ozai went to his father, Fire Lord Azulon, and asked to take Iroh's place as the next in line for the throne. Azulon was furious and insulted, demanding that Ozai kill his firstborn, Zuko, so he would also feel the pain that Iroh felt in losing a firstborn son. And this was corroborated by both Azula and Ozai himself that this was the truth. Zuko's mother, Ursa, refused to see this happen, however, and killed Fire Lord Azulon in his sleep, allowing Ozai to usurp the throne from Iroh something Iroh didn't seem to have an issue with. Now, there are a few different ways that Iroh could have taken the throne still, but there are two main ones that I'm going to focus on. The first possibility is simply that Lu Ten does not die in battle, and General Iroh goes on to take Ba Sing Se. With the Earth Kingdom capital having fallen, he would be primarily playing cleanup across the Earth Kingdom villages, quashing rebellions wherever they came up. General Iroh was clearly a strong tactician, able to break through the once impenetrable walls of Ba Sing Se, something Ozai could only do with his daughter infiltrating it and breaking it down from the inside. While Iroh would likely not be quite the jolly old man we see in the show, he clearly was a much more sympathetic man than Ozai was from the very beginning. This can be noted by Azula's comments about Iroh when she's just a child, calling him his royal tea-loving kookiness, and by the fact that he was so distraught by his son's death but Ozai was still willing to kill his own son with his own hands. There are more examples, such as Iroh's supposed journey to the spirit world or him being judged a worthy man by the legendary Dragon Masters, but suffice it to say that Iroh would likely have been a kinder ruler than his brother. But because his son's death would not be weighing on him, he would likely still be doing what he could to win the war for the Fire Nation. While Ozai was clearly a ferocious fighter and a powerful bender, and so was Iroh, Iroh knew how to lead and how to win battles. Ozai was hot-tempered, to the point of dueling his own son for speaking out of turn, whereas Iroh was much more methodical and level-headed. That's not to say that Ozai didn't have moments of tactical intelligence, but just that Iroh would likely be better at leading the Fire Nation to victory and not purging generals he saw as not fully respecting him or committing full-on war crimes that, in the end, wouldn't have done all that much to win the war. Really quick, let me just explain why this was a stupid idea. First of all, the comet that gave him the extreme power to do this didn't last all that long, a few minutes tops, and so they wouldn't have been able to get all that far even if there was nothing stopping them. 
Second of all, they were mostly burning down a whole lot of nothing. Forests and rocks and whatnot. And third, burning this land doesn't mean that all the earthbender rebels across the land would suddenly lose hope. It would likely only galvanize the Fire Nation as horrible tyrants hellbent on killing them all out, like they did with the Air Nomads. So Iroh would probably not waste the comet's potential on some sort of super weapon, but would instead use its immense power to take out the powerful Northern Water Tribe, just as Sozin did with the airbenders at their temples, except it would probably look more like a powerful invasion and less like a genocide. Since Sozin's plan was to try and kill every air nomad, including the Avatar which he knew to be an airbender. Anyways, judging by how close the Fire Nation is to victory when the show's original timeline starts, Aang would have a really tough time defeating Fire Lord Iroh and the Fire Nation. Assuming that Katara and Sokka, or someone else, would even be able to free Aang at the same time frame they did in the show. Assuming he was freed at the same time though, Aang would have to try and learn all four elements again. However, it would have to be in secret, taking training from deserted firebending soldiers and underground earthbending rebels. Iroh would have led the technologically advanced Fire Nation to many victories and to be the dominant power across the whole globe. All Aang could hope to do would be to train, master the four elements, and then either lead a rebellion against the Fire Nation or take Fire Lord Iroh out individually. The former would probably eventually work, because of the fact that the Fire Nation would be controlling literally the whole world at this point, and that never works out forever. It may not be in Iroh's lifetime, considering his age, but probably at least during the lifetime of his son, Lu Ten, being the Fire Lord. The latter option, where Aang takes Iroh out individually, would probably do little to change the total power structure, because the only reason taking Ozai's bending away worked was because there was a coordinated effort for Zuko to ascend to the Fire Nation's throne, instead of Azula, as Ozai attempted to become the Phoenix King, ruler of the world. Basically, if Lu Ten had survived and Iroh had become Fire Lord with the ambitions of winning the war, the Fire Nation would likely have won the war altogether, taking over the entire world. However, because of the world's tendency to find balance, it would probably not have lasted forever, looking more like the Mongolian or Macedonian empires in our world, taking over vast swaths of land for a relatively short amount of time, spreading their influence but ultimately splintering and losing power. Now, what if Lu Ten had still died in battle? How could Iroh have become Fire Lord in this situation? Well, it would likely mean that Ursa either doesn't go to save her son, Zuko, from being killed by Ozai, or that she fails in killing Azuland and is likely killed herself too. Either way, Zuko would have to die for this to work, and Iroh would come back after declaring defeat at Ba Sing Se, a broken man from his son's death, but still next in line to become the Fire Lord. Once coronated, he would likely no longer see the point in fighting. His son's death made him rethink the true nature of war, and with him being the Fire Lord now, he would likely seek a path to peace with the Earth Kingdom and the rest of the world too. Now, there would absolutely be ultra-militarists in his army and in his council, but he would also likely be smart enough to see it and take appropriate measures to protect himself. His goal would be to end the war and prevent the deaths of any more sons. Although it is definitely a possibility he would be overthrown in the coup of generals that still wanted to fight the war, I believe he was smart enough to work his way out of any situation that he ended up finding himself in. However, if he was overthrown, killed, or exiled, it would likely lead to a civil war within the Fire Nation, something the Earth Kingdom could capitalize on to take back its lost land. Them and the Northern Water Tribe would likely be working together to get rid of any Fire Nation colonies, and also support any factions within the Fire Nation that support peace. Either way, regardless of Iroh staying in power, I foresee Lu Ten's death and Iroh still becoming Fire Lord means that the world will enter a period of peace eventually, either by the Fire Nation voluntarily entering into a peace with the other nations of the world, or by the Fire Nation losing as it fights a civil war amongst itself. So those are the two main possibilities that I see if Iroh had become the Fire Lord. It's hard to tell exactly what would happen, especially since applying real-world logic to a cartoon world can lead to some weird results. Either way, I do think that everything would have changed from the timeline that we knew and grew up with in Avatar The Last Airbender. And if you think something else would have happened if Iroh had become Fire Lord, let me know in the comments below. I love this show, and I love talking about it, so I'm excited to discuss possibilities with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, it really helps me out. Also, if you want to see more of my content, go ahead and subscribe. 
and ring the notifications bell so you can get notified for when I do upload. If you want to stay up to date with me and what's going on with my channel, go follow my Twitter. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.